In this video, I will show you how to use a force-sensitive resistor with an Arduino to detect when something is being pressed or touched. Before we worry about the connections to the Arduino, let's look at the physical sensors. These are available in a variety of shapes, sizes, and sensitivity ranges. And what these actually are is just a variable resistor whose resistance changes as they are pressed on and deformed. So you can see that when it is not being pressed at all, the resistance is very high. It's actually over 2 mega ohms. It's out of range for my multimeter here. But as I press on it, the resistance decreases. Now, it is important to note that these are not really very accurate for absolute force or pressure measurements. If you've taken physics, you might know that pressure is force divided by area. So you can see that especially when pressing on this with something squishy like a human finger, the actual contact area is going to change a lot. And depending on where you press on it and what that contact area is, that could have a different effect on the resistance. So this is great for a qualitative measurement with an Arduino project. If you want a rough sense of, for example, how hard somebody is pressing on something, but this is not a good choice of sensor, for example, to build a scale where you need an accurate weight measurement. To take a look at the circuit and code, we are going to switch over to Tinkercad Circuits, which is a free online Arduino simulator. We have a separate tutorial video about this program linked in the description of this video. To connect your force-sensitive resistor to the Arduino, it is important to note that the Arduino cannot measure changes in resistance directly. It can measure changes in voltage. So to measure the changing output from the force sensor, you need to build something called a voltage divider using a second resistor in series with the sensor. So if we zoom in on the breadboard here, you can see I have the two pins of the sensor. One of those is connected to five volts and the other pin is in series with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which is then connected to ground. Now, the exact value of this resistor that works best is going to depend on the resistance range of your sensor, but you want this to be a pretty large value. 10 kilo ohms is always a good place to start, and you can adjust up or down from there as you look at the output on the Arduino, which we'll see when we look at the code. The middle pin of the voltage divider, that's the pin connected to both of the resistors in the middle here, is connected to one of the Arduino's analog input pins, and again, the voltage on that pin is going to change as we press on the force sensor. So I can demonstrate that here in Tinkercad, which has this slider to simulate pressing on the sensor, and I have a multimeter here to measure the voltage on that pin. So you can see when the sensor is not being pressed on at all, we have a reading of zero volts, but as I increase the force on the sensor, that voltage starts to increase and my LEDs start to light up. When I lower the force, that voltage goes back down and the LEDs turn off. We will now take a look at the code and I will put a link to this Tinkercad circuit in the video description so you can copy and paste the code if you want. But for now, I'm going to walk through it and talk about it line by line. So at the top here, we declare variables for our sensor pin and the sensor reading. We declare variables for the LED pins. And then in the setup function, we set those LED pins as outputs and initialize serial communication so we can print our sensor reading out to the serial monitor. Now we cover LEDs in one of the videos much earlier in our Arduino tutorial series, so I'm not really going to talk about them in this video. Again, you can find the link to the entire series in the description if you need to go back and check that out. In the loop function, we use the analog read command to read the sensor value from the sensor pin, and then use the serial print command to print that value out to the serial monitor. And this is useful for calibrating your sensor depending on what you want to do with it. So rather than just looking at the voltage on the multimeter, the Arduino analog read command is gonna convert that to a number between zero and 1023. So you can see that number changing here as I move the slider. And you can do that to look at how the value changes and then decide what to do with the sensor reading depending on what you are doing in your code. I am controlling LEDs here, but for example, you might be controlling something else like a motor or maybe printing out values to an LCD screen, all of which are things we have separate videos for in our Arduino tutorial series. In my case, I have a bunch of if statements comparing the sensor reading to different threshold values to decide which LEDs to turn on. So if the sensor reading is over 900, then I turn on all five LEDs, but else if it is over 800, I'm going to turn on four of the LEDs and so on, 
all the way down to else if the sensor reading is less than 500 then none of the leds are going to be on so you can see that here for example if i turn this down my sensor reading is only 181 none of the leds are on as i pass each one of those successive thresholds that condition in the if statement is activated and one more led will turn on all the way up until all five of them are on but again that is just a demonstration using the LEDs, once you have read the sensor value in using the analog read command, you can do whatever you want with that value in your code. So to recap, these sensors are pretty easy to use. You just need to remember that in order to connect one to your Arduino, you need to build a voltage divider by putting a separate resistor in series with the sensor. You can't just connect the sensor to the Arduino directly since the Arduino cannot measure changes in resistance, unlike a multimeter. And then in your code, you want to use analog read to read the sensor pin value and serial print to print the value out so you can calibrate it for your application. You can also try changing the value of this resistor because that is going to affect the output voltage here, which will then in turn affect the range of readings you get when you press on the sensor. We hope you found this video useful. For many other Arduino tutorials and cool science projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.